blog, Caper Emily and Madison. Today I want to tell you about the wondrous person named Jana Levin. She's a physicist and she's also an author and she's written, I think, two books. Jana Levin came to Adrian this week and I got to meet her. I even got to eat, like, eat lunch with her and it was just one of those amazing experiences ever. Her book, this one is called How the Universe Got Its Spots, which I got signed. And it says, to Brianna, great to meet you. Yours... Jan 11, or J Scribble. Pretty much, it's about the universe, and as you guys know, the universe has no edge. You also know from reading The Fault in Our Stars that some infinities are bigger than other infinities. But listen to this. I don't know if infinity has a place in nature. There's a good paradox due to Zeno, the ancient Greek philosopher from Elia, which is now southern Italy. Learned in the pre-Socratic schools of Greek philosophy, he is believed to have written an influential but now lost book of infinity. He was mystified by the idea of a continuous series known as the continuum and argued that if any given distance could be divided in half and then the two resultant pieces could be divided in half. Repeating the process an infinite number of times, there must be an infinite number of pieces across even an inch. We could never cross the room because we would have to pass an infinite number of points before reaching the other side. Like, it just makes your mind explode. Pretty much. There's an infinite number of numbers in the world. It's infinite. But there's also an infinite amount of numbers between 1 and 2. Like 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.11, 1 1.1111, 1.1111. Just, it keeps going and going and going. So if there's an infinite amount of numbers between 1 and 2, there's an infinite amount of points between one and two inches. So you'd never be able to cross that infinite number of points to get to the other side. You wouldn't be able to move an inch. Jan 11 talks about that in her book and talks about a lot of other things too. One of the greatest things she said was that she, like throughout school, math wasn't her thing. And I thought, I can't be a physicist. I'm too bad at math. That's always what I say when people are like, why, if you're so interested in the subject, why are you not taking classes in it? Why don't you major in it? And I'm just like, oh, I can't do math. But really, especially now, everybody is using calculator. From this experience, I've learned that maybe I should take a physics class. Maybe I'll really like it. In high school, I had this math teacher that said she loved math more than English because math was definite and English had just too many answers that you could have. And at first I, just, I, I agreed with her, but I liked the fact that you could just be creative in English. You can't be creative in math. But really, something that I learned from Jan 11 was that the restrictions that math puts on you allows you to be even more creative with the ways you come up with answers. And it just, it can make more beautiful things than just English alone because there aren't an infinite amount of words in the English language or in French or in Spanish or in Italian or any language you know. If you add them all together, every word in the universe, they aren't infinite. There is a definite amount of words. It's a huge, huge number, I'm sure, but it's not infinite. And math, numbers are infinite. They're infinitely huge, they're infinitely small. With infinity, you get more creativity than with a finite amount of words. Even though English and languages are finite and math is infinite, there's beauty in both of those because there's beauty in the finiteness of English where you have to choose your words carefully so that you can describe feelings and emotions and stories to the best of your ability with such strict boundaries of language but there's also beauty in the infiniteness of math and how you can have multiple ways of coming to one solution, one correct solution. And it's just beautiful, both of them. Bye, Caper. See you on tomorrow. That's really bad. I can't speak English.